another of these uh, solar-powered um, USB power banks, well, solar rechargeable, but also rechargeable from a standard uh, USB power supply. And this particular one, I bought it from a UK seller called Etang Understroke UK. Etang, I'm guessing it's a Chinese seller. And it, the £5 price seemed quite cheap for a 5,000 mAh bank, and I didn't uh, expect it to be 5,000 mAh. I tested its capacity. It came in at 2.4 amp hour, so 2,400 mAh for a 5 amp hour power bank. No great surprise, to be honest. This one is different, though. It doesn't even look like the picture on its listing, uh, whereas the other one had four LED positions and the solar energy, the, the little LED that lights with the output from the solar panel, was just sharing one of those positions. This one has the its own indicator position for the uh, green LED that's connected to the solar panel, and it's got four positions for the other usual, uh, you know, charge uh, charge indicators, the state of charge. Another slightly disappointing feature about this one is that compared to the last one I took apart, uh, which had quite large uh, sections of the silicon solar cell, this one has much noticeably smaller sections. It's no great deal, particularly in the UK, you know, we don't get much sunshine anyway. But um, it's just a wee bit of a sort of cheap thing. However, I've already did this open, and I'll open it again to show you guys what's inside. And the... Uh, Circuit does include protection uh, for the charging from the solar panel, so though it's not going to stop it being baked in sunshine, it does have the facility that once the lithium cell is fully charged, if you leave it in a windowsill for a long period of time, it's not going to overcharge it because it has the DW01 circuit in the MOSFETs, and the negative from the solar panel is on the uh, the correct side of that. It's not connected directly to the solar panel, uh, solar, uh, to the lithium cell. So, um. Let's uh, pop this open. Nice enough cases, I quite like the cases. They're smart. Not waterproof at all, but uh, I, I'm not even sure I'd say they're splash proof. This one, I think this one's got slightly different uh, catch system. It's also, I might change the LED. So, since I like this one, I, I might change the LED for a warm white LED. Just because I prefer the warm white LEDs. Oh, that's a, quite a tight clip. And it's just closed again, that's quite annoying. Oh yeah, so it's one of these things that the clips just repeatedly snap closed because there's so many of them. Righty-ho. And once again, the rubber bumper is trapped just in the casing. So there's the... Uh, the cell in here, I've marked the weight in it, it's 70 grams, and this one... Unusually, it's in sort of black foil. I'm not sure why this one's in black foil. Uh, what immediately came to mind was protection against heat, but that's quite the opposite. The black would actually absorb more heat from the sunlight. And this one is stuck in with a bit of double-sided tape, and it's not that hard to get out. It's just a bit of uh, the foam tape in the back, and then tacked onto fairly generous pads in the back of this. Um, so the solar panel, let's put that circuit board out in fact. I might need a smaller screwdriver bit for that. Is that going to fit? Yeah, that'll do. It has three screw positions but just two screws. Changing the LED should be fairly straightforward. It is a through hole, but it's soldered on the other side. So popping that off uh, reveals the MOSFET package. It's got another position. It's got the position for the two parallel MOSFET packages, uh, which gives extra current protection, but um, you know it can handle the higher current. But in this case, they've just got one, which is uh, cheaping out a bit. Oh, this has got a number on it. The chip has a number on it. That's good. T-Power. TP4351B. So that's T power, TP4351B. That's interesting. Most Usually those chips are anonymous. So there's one boost converter for both the sockets, I'm guessing, you know, they, they claim to two amp sockets, I'm guessing it's probably... I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be able to handle in terms of current. Let's uh, do a little experiment, shall we? 
let's get uh, this and plug it in and plug in a test load so the voltage has dropped to 4.4 volts at 830 milliamp, let's stick it to 2 amps it's now 1.48 amps and the voltage has dropped to about 4.13 so it's not really capable of 2 amps it's struggling even at 1 amp so typically like most of these things kind of 500 milliamps is probably all it's really going to be comfortable with what more is there to say about this it has that protection it's got the on the other side it's got the DW01 chip which is the common uh, protection one for the the cell so that'll be protected against over discharge and overcharge oh i have actually managed to change the shape of the cell slightly by squishing it but that's okay yeah. I'm fine with that. What's the worst that could happen? It's just a big fat lithium cell. So uh, 2.4 amp hour, uh, 70 grams. I'm pretty sure the one in the other uh, solar, the other unit was also around about 70. You know what? I can just check that right now and tell you one second. Yeah, the other one had similar capacity and it was 68 grams, so yep, yeah, 70 grams typically seems to equate in these instances to uh, the, a capacity of about 2.4 amp hour. The little solar panel, I quite like these solar panels, I like the fact they've got the matte finish on them, it's quite smart. And they just clip out and they're quite nicely designed, so uh, yeah, it's strippable for components, nice fat lithium cells, or, or just keep it as the, as the power bank. But uh, quite neat, you know, it's not bad, it's functional, it's not quite what they state it is. But having said that, for the money, it's, it's, I think that's perfectly acceptable. So uh, not bad at all. I've downloaded the data sheet and I've also made a very slight hack to this while I was putting it back together again. I changed the LED from the cold white to a warm white LED, just because I prefer that colour. I know some of you think, what's the difference, will cold white warm white? I think it's softer than the eyes. And I just like it. But another interesting thing to note about that little LED is that the pin that controls it in the chip, uh, it uh, drives the LED. It doesn't use the 5 volt boosted supply to drive it, which is good. It runs directly from the positive connection of the lithium cell. And you choose, you can add your own choice of resistor to limit the current through the LED, which isn't going to be, it's not going to be a huge voltage difference between the LED and the cell. So it could be quite, in this case, they suggest a 30 ohm resistor. But that pin is capable of syncing up to about 100 milliamps so you could theoretically you know make a, one of these power banks with a fairly decent light in it you know it, the whole thing could be basically a flashlight with the facility to actually charge stuff the chip came from a Chinese uh, server the, the chip the uh, data sheets and it took a long time to download I just thought I'd mention that if you want to look up TP4351B online uh, and look for the PDF data sheet, then it will take a while to download if you get it from the same place I got it. Because uh, it's definitely one of those, you can see it just creeping down, and it's just seven pages, but go and have a cup of tea while it's doing it. It's that thing that, you know, the stuff coming from the Chinese websites just seems to be bottlenecked in some way. There's an oddity on the data sheet in that it almost alludes to being used, uh, designed to handle maybe in two different forms, for a 4.2 volt or 4.35 volt lithium cell. I'm not sure about that. It's got two sections for VBAT, and I'm guessing 4.35 is that the new, um, is that the newer style of cell that's got a more stable chemistry at the higher voltages? I know that an ordinary lithium cell that's designed to charge to 4.2 volts max would not really be overly thrilled at 4.35 volts. It would probably take the charge. Uh, it would you know, work. It wouldn't necessarily just explode in flames at that point, but it would have be charged up to a much greater capacity, but you get very significant shortage. Uh, you know, it would, it would shorten the lifespan of the cell. It would just it would, uh, damage it over time very quickly. Uh, on the lower end of the scale, uh, the it says VBAT end 2.85 volts. So that's presumably the point it's going to cut off. I wonder if it cuts off the LED... Uh, flashlight at the same time or if it just cuts off the boost converter I'm not really I don't know about that it possibly has that thing whereby that if you plugged uh, something like a LED directly into the USB output 
it, even though it switched off the boost converter without actually knowing what's in this chip, if it had any way to control it. I don't know if there's any chance that it would actually just trickle current through that 2.2 uh, .2 microhenry choke to the output. So um, I don't know if it could be discharged accidentally below that voltage. However, it also states another voltage, which is 3 volts, and I'm not sure if that's just the point that it will kick in again. It will re-enable it once it's charged back above 3 volts. The quiescent current of the chip is about 15 to 25 microamps, um, which is okay, but when you consider that the, the with a solar panel, uh, that's not really that critical, um, although obviously this isn't designed with that in mind. But certainly in the case of this one, even just ambient lighting is going to boost, you know, give a few milliamps during the day that, you know, that's going to more than compensate for, for losses through quiescent uh, leakage. The quiescent current is the current the chip will draw from the cell uh, just when it's not doing anything, just when it's in standby mode. I will say when I put the white LED in, I, as a precaution, I disconnected the lithium cell. And just out of interest, before we connect it again, I held it up to the light and pressed the button just to see if it would kickstart the circuitry. And uh, it did, um, and it lit the warm white LED uh, through the chip. And uh, it actually stayed lit for quite a distance away from these LED floodlights, so that was quite interesting. Um, other than that, uh, what other features are worthy of note? Not an awful lot. There is one oddity here, the input and the output, the VDD in from the charge port obviously goes through the current regulating circuitry before it goes out to the battery. The two sockets here, the USB in and a USB out, that I'm not sure what's in this chip. It would be nice to see a schematic, you know, just a diagram of what's inside the chip. But it's got this random resistor here, R3NC. That's all it says. I'm not sure what that is. But it connects between the USB out and the... Oh, you know, that might be a sense resistor. That might be a current sense resistor. I'm not sure. Uh, to detect when the sockets, uh, the actual, the circuit's being overloaded. Possibly? I, I'm, I don't really know. Um, but other than that, you know, that's, it's fundamental, it's an interesting chip. There, of the seven pages of the data sheet, only two are really, you know, useful. You know, the rest is technical specifications and uh, the sort of physical dimension specifications and, pro, you know, example circuit boards of layouts, but uh, this uh, one carries most of the data uh, that you need and this one has this sort of schematic layout and it is a very minimalist approach. I'll be looking at uh, other uh, power banks in future and just like noting to see, I'll keep this data sheet handy, I want to see if the pinout is roughly the same, uh, if it's the identical chip that's unmarked or if it's clones or whatever. Um, there's other things that I'm not 100% sure, 91%, 3.7 volt, I'm not 100% sure what the um, what some of these things are because they're in Chinese and it's kind of yeah, I kind of want to know but uh, how, uh, someone mentioned that you can use your phone with the translation app to actually just look at the Chinese characters uh, That maybe that's uh, I'm not sure if it's globally the same thing but here in the UK uh, that doesn't work unfortunately it doesn't seem to handle at this point in time the uh, Chinese characters but um, Yep, it's, it's an interesting chip, it's, uh, it's certainly, and, and the, this pack, it's not up to, it's, it doesn't meet its specifications, but other than that, you know, it's quite robust, it's quite nice, it's, it's a chunky little pack, it's got a, it seems to have a modest output from the solar panel, it's even just the components, it's worth the money, so um, yeah, I, I quite like this one.